Hi guys, it's Jamie here and welcome to the tutorial to make the Tall Pansy Folio Journal. I have added some extras for my own journal. I do have the original kit here, the pockets and the ephemera I've printed onto 200 GSM cardstock. Which one of your lighter cardstocks, my printer won't handle 300 which is like the heaviest and on the back of any that have got journal cards I've already taken some of our paper pack one and printed that on the reverse so that the journal cards are pretty when they're cut out this has been printed onto 120 gsm which is like a good quality printer paper normal printer papers between 70 and 80 gsm and when it comes to my pages the same thing i've printed it on the slightly lighter 120 gsm and i've used our color swatching on paper pack two to pick up specific colors in the kit and then print that on the reverse so for example with this one i picked up on that blue lace this one i think i matched to the purple stripe i matched to the blue lace and so on i've also taken our basic envelope template i can't remember which one this is but i wanted a tall slim envelope and i've printed it on papers from our paper pack collection one they have some patterning on the inside of the envelope when you open it and also on the outside and so I can make a good size journal where there's plenty of plain pages that you can write on the colors that I've used on here I've printed as papers for the actual journal itself so I'm going to mix it all up when I put it together that's where I'm starting at first thing I need to do is cut everything everything's been cut up there's one thing I want to do before we can start inking edges and that's decide the order the papers are going to go in because to get them to sit nicely in a journal I take a little bit off each set of papers now you can see that as I've added things those edges are beginning to stick out just want to check the order first that I'm happy with how this opens up that's the front one that can stay that size but with the next one I'm going to take a small amount off the width then with the next one I'll be taking that amount plus another minus two if you like once you have decided the order of the papers and you start to do the cutting you can see that it's important that you stay with that order this time i'm going minus three the next one will be minus four and so on and now you can see those papers are no longer sticking out over page one i've sized the width of those papers the next thing i'm going to do is go around all the edges with my version of vintage photo which is actually the Versafine Vintage Sepia. I knock it off because as you can see it's quite a strong colour deposit. I do go down the spines as well and I turn the spine the other way and go down that side, both sides of that side, as well as the normal edges and I'll be doing that on not only the pages but also the pieces of ephemera that I've got. Now everything is stained up so it's all ready to put together. The next thing to do is to make the cover. For the cover we're going to do a wallet style cover. It's my favourite at the moment which means it needs to have a small fold over area, an area for spine, an area for the fold over. Therefore we're going to start cutting this down. Let's have a look, see what width we're looking at. I'm going to score in the spine area. I'm going to come to the right of this. I'm going to leave about a centimetre. So what we've done is we've scored in a spine and then we've scored in the area that's going to 
turnover to make the wallet. I'm going to fold along each score mark. We're going to add the closure onto the flip of the journal and I'll be using magnets for that. Three magnets. I have marked the space up halfway one towards the top, one towards the bottom. The easiest way I know to attach magnets is actually to use double-sided tape rather over glue. Put the tape on the magnet. Now they're covered, I'm going to take the backing off, turn it so the sticky side is down. I'm going to take another three magnets and place them on the top of the three that we've just put onto the cover. This time we're adding the sticky tape to the top. going to turn that against that one where it meets push that down separate it up the next thing to do is to cut some papers to fit over our magnets to create a pretty cover once you've cut pieces to fit leaving some kind of border around them and I've stained them again all we need to do is glue them down. Go over the whole thing with just a glue stick. At the edges, get a stronger glue. We'll be putting this on with a similar size border around it. You can cover over all the panels except this spine. I've covered some of this folder, but I haven't done these spine areas because they are too slim. I manually cut, and if I'm trying to cut something too thin, it often goes a bit wobbly. The only other thing I've done on the inside front cover, I've added a flip with a bit of washi tape, also some glue, because washi tape wouldn't be strong enough to hold that. And to the flip, I've added a tiny bit of lace, which made me realise before we go much further, if I want to add lace or anything that's going to involve sewing to my pages, I want to do that before I sew the pages in because taking individual pages to a sewing machine is so much easier than trying to sew when they're already in the book. This one will be the exception to the rule, but from now on, we shall do some work on the pages before we put them in. That might include adding pockets as well as lace, depending on whether I want to sew around the edges, basically. Again, I want to keep the pages in order. That's going to be our front page. We've already got a flip, We've got a couple of blanks, and then another blank. So on this one, we might add one of the long pockets, and it may be that I'm going to have to trim it down a small amount to get it to fit. Where I've trimmed this down, I've re-inked the edges, and now we're just going to put a bit of glue on those edges to make the pocket, but we don't need to do too much because we're going to secure it with some stitching. I'm going to keep putting things back together because it gives me a better idea of how everything is lining up and looking. Another what would be double blank page because that would be next and therefore I might put some lace on this page here. Secure the lace down for stitching. I will use some of the Fabri-Tac style glue. Later we will try to sew that down. I might add a touch of lace that actually sits over the edge of the page. And I have maybe another double page that has nothing going on. I might get another one of those longer pockets this time. A tiny amount has to come off but not too much. I've added lots of lace to different page edges. I'm going to do a belly band of this blue lace. If you've been on any of my previous videos, you'll understand that my sewing machine is not set up in a position where I can video. But as I can't sew very well anyway, that's okay. You've seen what I'm going to sew down. 
so far. You don't need to see me stitch it. Now I've done all the sewing that I want to do to the pages. It's time to put the pages into the journal. I've marked up three positions for the three hole pamphlet stitch. One is right in the center. The next one is two centimeters down, which is about an inch and the same the other side. I'm going to take a book and an awl and punch through these pages. So we're going to put them together, make sure everything's lined up, clip them. You can punch through those positions. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the book to give me a good punch into the spine area by using the book spine to cradle my pages. So that's my pages with holes on that spine. Now we're going to take the book cover and on our spine, which is this one, going to line it up. We want the center position. Using my awl again, or you could use the crocodile. I'm going to make a hole in each of these. To try and coordinate everything in, I've got some embroidery thread that I'm hoping I can find a colour match. Three lengths of the embroidery thread, so that's one, two, three. Taking some natural beeswax from the thread through the beeswax. Take a large eyed needle. We'll take our pages and the cover and hopefully everything will sew together. We go through the centre pages, through the centre hole of the cover, go through the cover, through those, through the top hole and then go back through that centre hole. And when you come through, make sure you're the other side of that long thread. Now we want to try and pull things tight but so they don't buckle. Then tie a few knots, although I'm quite happy to leave some dangle to that. I don't want it to go over the cover length. And that's now our pages in our notebook or journal. That's how our stitch spine is looking. Now we're going to run through and add some of the extra pieces that I've prepared. Where you've done stitch work, you may want to cover it up. On this one, I feel that's okay. On this side, you've got a whole big square area here. A big piece of paper and make that into a pocket. I'm going to take a small amount out of here using a circle punch. Get the halfway point, take that out, re-ink that bit. I'll get some glue and go just along the edges. On this page here we're going to put a small decoration at the bottom so it's still mainly a writing page. We've got a large pocket here which is going to need something to go inside that. We do already have some cards made of course. Here we've got a line of stitching which I think is okay because it's at the edge. That line of stitching isn't working for me. So although we can't cover it all up with the envelope we can cover up a lot of it to hold the envelope fold over down a little i'm going to put this on but only glue three quarters of the way round so that that can be tucked under there so that's the glue on there three quarters of the way and we're going to place that down it will act as a bit of a catch the top of that envelope with the longer pockets and envelopes that I've put into here I'd like to create some of my own journal cards so I've printed up from paper pack one the cream option on one side with the receipts and the other side with the stripes. We're going to do some very simple quick decorations. I'm going to take my corner rounder and very using the smallest setting round the corners. On both sides do some inking. In the group we have some free frames available. I'm going to take one of those and one of the pictures 
from the kit and simply frame that picture. You can place that onto there to make a very quick card for that long pocket. You can either go halfway or a little bit higher so there's even more writing space. I might go a little bit higher. I'm going to do all my individual journal cards for the longer pockets and envelopes that I've made. Here's the three simple long form journal cards. Now I'm just going to put those into their various pockets. I still have plenty of pieces left from the kit. I've made this into a paper clip and then we can just take a piece of card and create another small journal card for that one or fold it over and maybe make a little booklet. Here's the little booklet as you see another quick transformation using one of the fussy cuts. This page has a line of stitching down the center of the page so I've taken some of the off cuts and have made those into pockets and I'm going to stack them one on top of the other up that page. It's not going to cover up all the stitching but it will detract the eye from it a little bit. New double pockets. We've got a small flip up booklet made from scrap and one of the cards that I've trimmed down to fit. We have a paper clip here and a small something there so we can put that there. It's come together really well. I do have the corner pockets that I haven't used. We've got this front of the envelope that is really pretty, so I may not do this, but you could add a pocket onto there so that you have a double pocket thing going on. And I might do that. I've left one side unglued so it can be used more like a tuck spot so I can put one of the bigger cards in there. I have another corner pocket here that will fit this flip up page right at the beginning and I'm going to add that as well because it just adds levels of interest to the page. Here's the card that I've made for this pocket. I'm hoping it fits actually, I haven't checked. Yeah, it does. And that was from leftover cardstock. I feel like I just want to add maybe a bit of page decoration where there isn't much going on. I could make that the smallest tuck spot pocket. And that's a bit of paper, so that's no good unless I back that. I've got some more spare card. So I'm going to back that with the card and then put that in there. I've backed that and stained it. I added a little lace detail to that pocket just to give it a bit of something extra. And in fact, I do have these lace details from AliExpress and I might see if any of them fit within the pocket. I may go through and do a few little pieces of lace embellishments but this journal is basically done. Let's quickly walk through what's been done here. We have the flip up page that has some lace trim, a pocket and a card a writing page, a long tall pocket. On the other side we have a tall pocket this way, card and a corner pocket on top of the tall pocket. Some very simple page decorations on this side. Here we used some leftovers as small double pockets with cards because that side had the stitching from the lace. Lots of writing pages in this journal. Just added a small pocket with lace detail and a small card to write on to balance with the detail in that top corner. More writing pages, our central spread turn over we have another long pocket and we made that journal card to fit. Another decorated page with a bit more lace detail. The paper clip on this side with a small card and on this side with a small booklet. A lace belly band and card. We have the tall envelope with the tag 
a long pocket on the reverse. That is our tall folio made into a journal. I do have a bonus tutorial that I'm going to make available to everyone using this kit as well. I haven't filmed it yet, so just keep an eye out for that. And I will catch you very, very soon. Bye.